All right. Welcome everybody to team call tonight. We are super excited because we have a jewel Q and a tonight. So, um, we can all maybe Jules here. You want to unmute and just say, hi, I'm Jamie Haskin diamond. Sally Bass diamond. New York diamond. Crystal rolls and crayons diamond. Emily. Emerald. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Awesome. We got some questions we gathered from you guys from what you commented in the post and things like that. So we're just going to get through a handful. I know we probably won't get through every single one because we can't be here all night, but thank you for providing some questions here and we'll just dive in and this is going to be fun. So, um, how about we start with some tangible things here? I know a couple of, uh, one question was, um, what is the best way you found to expand your network? Who wants to start off on that one? I can. Um, was that one that I said I would do? <laughs> yep, go for it. Yep. Okay. There were so many good ones. Um, you know, I think the the most the easiest way and the most important way is just to continue building relationships, and that is um, talking to people um, in the grocery store, at church, wherever you are. There's always people that you can talk to or uh, start up a conversation with. Um, you know, it's easy to find things that are in com you have in common with with people if you just start talking to them. Um, and so I I just started getting more brave and just um, starting up conversations with people in the store, um, wherever I am. But also, you know, Facebook and Instagram. It's it's just there's a whole huge world out there that. Um, you can expand on, you know, um, like groups, um, interest groups, maybe you like, for me, we have a Australian shepherd dog. So I joined all the Australian shepherd dog groups on Facebook. There's tons. So, um, you know, just find something that you're interested in and go find those groups on Facebook and just start being present in there, commenting, show your name, start friending some people, make conversation with people. Um, also Instagram friend, new people that you would maybe like to recruit someday and start building a relationship with them. Um, Instagram is incredible. And I follow people's stories and I will comment on their stories. I'll like, uh, reply to them and their stories. If they're asking questions or, um, just say, Oh my word, your baby is so cute or whatever, just start that relationship with them and, and start talking to them, um, in their stories from IG, just, uh, I just, I don't know. I, I think I would just use those as much as possible. Oh, that would be my, uh, tip on that one. Um, I don't know if you had more. Yeah, I had a couple of tips. Um, so I have built the majority of my network online. Um, I live out in the middle of nowhere and I don't get out a whole lot. <laughs> so most of my network building has been online. Um, and so a couple of tips for that. First of all, add value online. Do whatever you can to post content that inspires, entertains, or edu educates people. Um, that way you're adding value to their lives and they have a reason to keep following you. Um, the other thing is be vulnerable. Um, people will connect to you if you are intentionally vulnerable and um, willing to open up to people because that builds a stronger connection quicker than anything I know of. Um, sharing your story and being vulnerable in sharing your story can be really, really beneficial because um, people will connect to you um, more that way and they'll feel like they can be vulnerable with you. So, um, that's, to me, that's, that's more important than like the volume of content that you do sometimes, or like having the perfect content or perfect pictures or anything. Like if you're genuine and you're sharing your story and you're being vulnerable, people will really connect to that. Um, and then the other thing is just being curious about people. So 
in relationship building and stuff, it's, it's more about the other person and just genuinely being curious about people, asking questions about them. Um, like Sue mentioned, you know, replying to their stories is really big um, because people share like little day-to-day -day bits and pieces of their life in their stories. And so you can kind of like hack into that and just ask them more questions about it, ask about, you know, their life more and be um, curious. So those are my tips. Awesome. I'm going to move on to the next question. If someone else wanted to say something, um, when you Jules just speak up and stop me, but, um, what was one mindset shift that made the biggest impact in your business? Sal, do you want to start us off on that? Yeah. Uh, yes, that was number nine, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, I would love to talk about that. And actually, it really is perfect segue into this question from what Brittany was talking about just a few minutes ago on the call. And I guess the biggest mindset shift for me was belief. I never, like right away when I started doing this, I didn't really believe that I could get to diamond. I wanted it, but I didn't really believe I could. I wanted, um, you know, uh, house with land, but I didn't really believe it would ever happen to me. So, um, slowly as I, I kept growing and, you know, the business kept doing so well and I started, and then I was getting, um, you know, from my upline, I was getting reinforced all the time from them getting built up, getting encouraged. You can dream big, you know, all of that. And I just really started believing and once I made that shift and I really like believed I wrote it down, I remember doing a Maxwell book study. I actually wrote it down. I said, I believe that I can get to diamond. I believe that I will have a house and acreage someday. And, you know, I still have things on my list that I believe, you know, will happen. Um, but it was, it was belief for me. It was, I, I had to uh, truly believe in myself that I could do it and that I could bring others with me too. And that was the biggest mindset shift for me in how I feel like uh, it just propelled me onto the top. Absolutely. Does anyone else want to add on to that? I think, I think for me in particular, I always had belief in the products because my story was pretty amazing, but I didn't always... Um, believe in my why. I think working on that foundational why, making it so much bigger than just a paycheck or, you know, it's something to do, it's a side gig, it's a, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like Brittany talked about, successfully thinking has now become my wow for other people because I see so many people in their daily lives give up on themselves quit, not think successfully, that this could be a vehicle where I could not only change people's health, but that mindset shift into, gosh, we can change people's lives. When they get free in their health, they can think successfully like I can, I can now because of my freedom story in my health. And that propels me, that mindset shift was huge for me and where I believe I went from gold to senior gold to Ruby to senior Ruby pretty quickly because I could see a vehicle, not just for people's health, but for people to really break free of a lot of really critical thinking and feeling like they couldn't be a success and their potential was all locked up. It is what it is. It's not going to get any better. Um, and to offer that vision for people in success was just a huge mindset shift for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think even at the beginning for me was the difference between um, shifting that focus from myself to others in terms of what you're worried about, right? A lot of times you, at the beginning, you can be really worried about whether people think and responses and, you know, putting yourself out there and being out of your comfort zone and all that. But if we can shift it from being all about me and what I'm worried about and what I'm, you know, nervous about or whatever and onto other people that helps you move forward with courage. Right. So that's a big shift. I think that's really important to, to make as well. Um, 
All right. I hope you guys are taking notes because I want you guys to be able to identify things. There's going to be a lot of tangible stuff in here. And I want you guys to, be able to identify something that, you know, you could work on or improve on or talk to your people about or anything like that. So um, another question, let's move on here. So um, if, how much time do you put in seasons of wanting to grow fast or, and go hard? Time management, those kind of questions. Who wants to start that off of? I can start that one. Um, so there was a shift that I made a while back that had more to do with energy than time because a lot of this business is the energy that you put into it. Um, cause you can put in two hours of quality work with a lot of energy and enthusiasm and totally outwork someone who does nine hours of muddling through it or feeling like they're dreading it <laughs> or just like a bad attitude about it. So starting off with, you know, doing affirmations, um, and doing a gratitude journal, maybe where you're identifying things that you're thankful for watching something inspiring to like get you pumped and then carrying that energy through your work is going to get you further faster than just working all day long every day. Um, you know, I would say generally I work probably four hours ish a day on this, um, give or take. And then there's been seasons definitely where I worked more, um, and seasons where I worked less, but I notice it doesn't really the time doesn't really reflect as much as what the energy does. So if you can focus on that, I think it's super powerful. Yeah, for sure. Em. Um, I agree. Um, and yeah, <laughs> just listening to Brittany's call before this too, she was, she kind of touched on this a little bit and um, you have to work hard to create momentum. You've got to put in the time. You have to be willing to sacrifice things. And um, yeah, I mean, if you want to grow fast, you're going to have to put in a lot of time. And that's just the way it is. That's how it would be in any other job. If you're climbing up the ladder, right? You're going to meet that deadline. You're going to do whatever it takes. So um, I think all of us jewels can say that there was days in full momentum that we were working eight plus hours. Um, you know, like M said, it's it's probably average four to five. But um, yeah, it's you work like you're building a million dollar business, just like Brittany Howard said. If you didn't catch that call before this one, you're going to want to go back and, and listen to that. Um, but yeah, for sure. Agree. Um, that's good. Thanks, ladies. All right, Chris, how about you start us off with talking about, you know, someone struggling to pinpoint their why, uh, maybe they're struggling to dream and to think bigger. What advice do you have on the possibility at hand with this opportunity? And how big should we really be dreaming? Um, speaking from someone who did not dream big at the beginning, <laughs> um, you need to dream big, really big, and don't think that it's too big and that it's not possible. Um, draw your line and then draw your line in the sand and go for it and, and believe it because it is, and I'm living proof. Every single one of us on here is living proof of it. I, I that's really probably my best advice to you is if you, what you can dream can happen for real. Cause when I started, I did not even imagine that I could quit teaching. I didn't. And I think there was a, I had a lot of skepticism, I think, and self-doubt. Um, not, I shouldn't say self-doubt because I, I knew what was happening and we were growing fairly quickly and, you know, it was catching on and, and we just kept going. Um, but I think in the back of my mind, I just didn't always, believe that that could happen. And then I remember when I hit a thousand points, I was like, Oh my goodness, God, you're really doing this. Aren't you? And I just, because that was the month you guys, that was January. And I remember that's when I had to tell my school if I was going to go back to teaching or not. 
And that's, that was a huge decision. And I still was scared. I was still scared because I play safe just like we all do. We doubt that those big things can happen. And we doubt, we, we forget that we just need to step out in faith and trust that God is going to do it, you know? And that's the big thing is stepping out in faith and just running with it. And I can, and (laughs) from a very small town girl that lived a very simple, safe life for a very long time, you just need to step out and trust that God is going to do this, but you have to be willing to put in the time and treat this like a business. And I just saw, I'm going to say this to you. Yes. The sacrifices are worth it. A hundred percent. They're worth it. Um, and I didn't sacrifice a lot. I have not sacrificed time with my kids, maybe some bedtimes, maybe, you know, that Kevin put, but you know what? It's good that Kevin puts Keaton to bed at night. That's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with him doing that. It's okay to not be watching TV all the time. You guys, I can't tell you the last time I sat down and watched a full on television show from beginning to end. I don't watch TV anymore. It's been a long time. Um, I don't even watch all the Netflix stuff y'all are talking about all the time never watched any of them. I don't even have Netflix. (laughs) We have an antenna upstairs. So, um, (laughs) so I'm just saying, shut the TV off, spend some time building relationships, take somebody out for coffee, go out for dinner, like, you know, like invest in people and that's, what's going to grow your business. And that's where you're going to see things happen. Um, but dream big dream huge because you guys, I just moved my family to South Dakota and my husband quit his job twice. <laughs> and, um, it's a, that's a big sinking deal when we depended on him to make a certain amount of money. And in order for us to even think about something like that, you know, like it's seriously dream really, really, really big, you know, and, um, it'll happen, but you're gonna have to work for it, you know, and you're gonna have to be willing to do the work. And, um, but it's worth it. And that's, I think that's the big thing is when I started to see those things happen and I did the same thing as Sal, shifting your mindset and seeing it. And I was a, see it to believe it kind of girl, I guess I just grew up in that kind of family. Um, but I allowed myself to start to dream big and like, this is really happening. All right, we're going to go for it. And we just kept going for it the whole way through. And we still are because we have other people going for it. (laughs) So you don't stop there. And I had people say that too. Well, you're diamond now. Are you going to keep going? I'm like, well, what do you do? You just quit. Like, what do you like? You don't just quit. You got all these people that have joined you. You keep going for them, you know? And that's like, Jamie, you just said too, you do it for the people, you know? And there's how many hundreds, thousands of people out there that need their lives changed. We do it for them. Exactly. Jules, I can see you all. So if you unmute, I'll just know that you're planning on talking. Otherwise I'll keep moving forward. Okay. <laughs> you going to still go over number eight or cause she touched on that a little bit, or are you going to, or are you just going to, we can shift there. I was going to end there because of like with each of us, but we can definitely go there. Now we touched it on. Yeah. This. Let's go end there. It. That's go fine. There. Oh, and there is that you said. Sure. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Question best tips for staying focused on your path and not getting caught up looking and comparing ourselves to the journeys happening around us. It's a good one. Yes. I'll start. Um, okay. So this is a really good one. And I, I know we have kind of talked about this before, but the first thing that popped into my head when I read that question first of all, you guys, these questions are incredible. And I just want to thank you all for taking the time to write those in, in the chat or in the, um, post, because they're really good questions. And it makes us think too. It makes us remember and think back on our journey and all of this. So it's just really been good reminiscing and thinking of, you know, answers and stuff like this is really good for us. So thank you. So anyway, um, the first word was contentedness. Um, I think that, that I had to learn because it is very easy to compare yourself and to look at others, other people going faster and, um, you, you, you know, don't have blinders. I, and you know, in people in the horse business, I always think about those blinders on the horse. Whenever I think about comparison or watching somebody else's journey and being, you know, a little unsettled, like that should be happening to me. I think about the horse with the 
the blinders on his eyes or whatever. And I'm like, that is what we have to do. We just have to focus on our own path. That horse stays straight on his path and he knows where he has to go because those blinders are on. And that's what we have to do too. And you have to be content with where you're at. Contentedness, gratitude, trust. Contentment in where you're at. Your points are right where they should be and right where they need to be in this moment. Gratitude, being grateful for your points and where they're at. If you have 450 points, there are a lot of people who have never even gotten close and would love 450 points. You've got to be grateful for where you're at and trusting that God has you right here, right now for such a time as this, right when you're supposed to be here at this moment. Um, you can't look at other people then if you are content and grateful and trust in God. So you just have to believe that and you have to just keep those blinders on and keep moving forward. Work like we're talking, work your butt off, have that belief in yourself, dream big and give yourself permission to dream big. You can dream big. Don't be afraid to dream big. I mean, that's what I'm still doing and I have done. It's okay. You'll see it come true. You guys, it will, it will happen. So anyway, that's, I mean, the comparison game, you can get in big trouble doing that. Don't go down that road. Just don't, you're not supposed to be where they're at. Okay. Trust God. You are not supposed to be there. And, and you know what? The only way to get there is to work your booty off. If that's where you want to be, then figure out why you're not there and work hard to get there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, girl. <laughs> so I have some thoughts on this too. I want to share and you touched base on some of that. I absolutely love that. So I would say focus on what, not on what you can't control, but focus on what you can control. So what can you control? Reflect on what's going good. What's going good in your business? What are, what are you, you know, liking, whatever, where do you want to see growth and be specific? Reflect on that. Do you want more leaders? Do you want more silvers? Do you want more joins? Do you need better retention? What area do you want more growth in? And then what is a skill set you can focus on for a month or for a few months at a time, knowing that the consistency in that skill set and developing that you're going to see reflections of that months down the road, not that day, or maybe not even that month. So what skill set can you focus on and develop as you are working your business, right? Be, pro be proactive in that. Um, having a mindset shift from short-term to long-term. So you're going to, you know, you're going to learn something that you need to learn being in the spot that you're in right now. There's, there's something you need to grow through and that you need to learn to, and then you're going to be able to use that and teach it to somebody else. Right. And that's going to help you move forward and be ready for that next rank or that next, you know, wave of momentum or whatever it is. And then see others success as inspiring. Okay. Switching that mindset to that inspires me. That is possible. I can do that. If that person can do it, I can do it. And I can bring someone else in who can do that. Right. So genuinely, and uh, Sal started to touch on this too, genuinely be happy for people, genuinely be like root for other people. And that might start with some of your mindset and positive affirmations or something, but needing to learn not to compare and knowing that someone else's success does not take away from yours. Someone else being successful does not mean you are, cannot be successful. It's not you or them. Okay. That's, that's, you're totally in the wrong playing field. Then this is something we do together. It has nothing to do with your success. So it's a choice for you to make all of these things, the things that Sal talked about, it's your choice. So choose to be grateful, choose to see that as inspiring and to cheer other people on. And if you don't feel like it, just start doing it. And that will start to come with and focus on what you can control. All right. <laughs> Just want to make sure no one else is speaking up. Okay. Next question. I was looking ahead, but I was talking this time. So let me see here. Um, favorite ways to cast vision and engage people in their business beyond maybe a welcome call or a vision casting call at the very beginning, um, or even including some tips in that too, for people who maybe aren't aware of that, but what are some different ways we can cast vision to people and engage them in this business beyond, you know, wanting to get a join or even getting to silver. 
Anyone want to start on that? I can start on that. Um, so something I try to do is try to just call out their strengths. So I think when we talk about casting vision, we usually think about like the dream or talking about the income potential or the potential it could be for their family or whatever it is. But a lot of times people have untapped potential in their strengths that have never been utilized or celebrated or anything like that. And so when you start to find those strengths in them and call them out, it's really powerful and meaningful to people because most people go their whole lives not being recognized for those things. And so when you see that in them, it's like it lights a fire. It lights a fire in them and they start to see where their place in the world could be different. And so, um, and that's going to start something meaningful in this business for them versus it just being about a rank or a paycheck or um, whatever. It's, it's going to help them find meaning and um, helping them find meaning is part of helping them find vision in the business. And so that's going to go long-term. That, that's not like that short, quick, like, let's get you to silver so you can pay for your products. You know, it's going way beyond that and starting to develop a vision that's going to take root for them. So. Love that. So good. Um, if you're struggling to make that jump to the next rank, what advice can you give? Um, I love this question because, um, you know, I could say the obvious, like, don't quit. Don't stop doing your IPA. Don't stop posting. Don't stop following up. Um, but I think after, um, five years of doing this, my biggest word of advice to this question would be personal growth because if you're in a time where your business is like in a low you know or a slow spot your mindset is what is going to pull you out of that it's what's going to pull you through it's it's got to be your mindset and so the way to, you know, having the strong mindset is doing the personal growth, taking time to um, get some self-help help books, John Maxwell. Um, there's so many. And um, I think we, do we have a list compiled probably in the team page, but um, big shameless plug for for book club guys get on book club Thursday nights. They, that 30 minutes is vital to your business and to you sticking with it or um, when it gets hard. So um, yeah, if you're struggling to, to make that jump, do your personal growth, but don't quit the other things either. <laughs> Just keep going. And for me, I feel like I do best when I go back to the basics. So if I'm struggling to get up in the rank or push numbers higher or recruit, it's going back to the basics. It's remembering, you know, my why, because you can endure any how when you know your why, right? And I'm sure at every level, every rank, it may be good to reassess why you're doing this business in the first place. Why do you want that next rank? For what purpose? Is it to get the rank? Is it for you? Is it to change more lives? Is it to invest more in your family? Is it to dream bigger? Is it to give more? It really is important to be very tangible about the momentum 
Brittany's call the, just before this too, you know, you need to create the momentum that you want to see. And that means you being the rock star and you want to be a rock star to your team, showing them that it can be done. And a lot of times that starts with just the basics, just the basics of why you're doing this business so that you can pursue through any endurance, um, any how that kind of comes your way. Um, and so I, I really think each rank you should be doing that, reflecting upon the people that have joined you and where do you want to go next and for what reason? Because it does change. You know, my why at Silver was different than gold, than senior gold, than ruby. And it's so exciting because you can be expectant. Yes, there's a tangible goal to be met, but God is changing you as you tap into that purpose and that joy and the desire to keep going. Because if you're going to keep going just to keep going, that is definitely not sustainable. It's not successful. You want significance. That's going to be sustainable and successful. I had a couple quick things on this one. Um, I know that a lot of people want to rank up, but what I like to ask is, are you willing to rank up? Because a lot of times there is things that you are avoiding doing, whether that's a skill set or a mindset and leaders aren't avoiders. <laughs> this is something I've learned the hard way too, because there's things I don't want to do in my business. I don't want to have to do or I want to avoid, I feel uncomfortable doing, but the things that you're avoiding are the things you need to be doing to rank up. And um, another thing, affirmations, uh, because I will say she plugs for affirmations all day long, but you need to know why. And the reason why is because you're affirming the negative things about yourself all day long, every day. And probably when you get on the phone with your sponsor, you're saying, oh, I'm just so stuck. I'm struggling with this, so-and-so is struggling with that. I can't get my leaders to do this. You're affirming all of these things over and over and over about why you're stuck at that rank. And so if you wanna be at a different rank, you need to affirm 10 times more all of the positive things about that. So affirmations, do the things you're avoiding um, and get your mindset right about it. So good. All three of you had like spot on things for that. So, oh, love it. Um, I want to do three more questions. I know we're late, but I think this is good. So I want to quick touch base on three more if you guys are good at that. Um, I want to roll into this question because it touches based on kind of what I wanted to say in response to it with what where Sarah started to go with it. And it's interesting because um, it was you guys, Sarah was talking about in terms of when you want to rank up, right. And you want to get things moving forward. Um, and there was a question, you know, there are moments in your businesses when we are in momentum and we feel inspired and motivated, what are your best tips for being proactive and keeping that momentum mindset? And, um, anyone else can speak up and talk on this too, but I had thought a few things I had took note of, um, and that's intentionally, one intentionally duplicating. And I, and I don't mean duplicating as like, you guys know to duplicate, but intentionally. So reflecting on what are you doing? What have you been doing the past three months? What has shifted or changed? What are you, what does your IPA look like? Um, what is your team doing well for the past three months? Because likely what you've been laying groundwork for is why you are in momentum now or why you're growing right now. And then if you know that, then you can be very intentional to make sure that continues to duplicate. Um, so that means not letting your focus shift to one area, because I've seen this happen in my business, you know, hitting Emerald or hitting Sapphire, and you, you get into these spots and your focus in momentum can without, and this is not done intentionally, but it can shift. It can shift to um, what is demanding the most of your attention. And sometimes that's not your IPA, right? Or sometimes it's what is demanding the most of your, you know, your time. And you need to be intentional on those things that you were duplicating the last few months to get you to where you're at and continue it, right? So um, another thing is being proactive on looking for any gaps. So um, whether that's in duplication or retention, if things are moving fast, 
are things being done the right way with new people coming in, um, looking for gaps on where how silver development or are my leaders bring, bringing in people who want to share? Um, is it just this person over here that is, but not these people? So looking at your team as a whole and trying to find those gaps as a leader um, where they could be ahead of time before it becomes a problem, right? Because your momentum now, everything's seems great, right? You can just kind of keep going and, and, and just love it. And it's great, you know, keep, keep being excited. Excitement is contagious, but trying to be proactive and finding those things that you can develop, right? What is something that each of your people can focus on and develop while you're in momentum and keep doing the things, you know, just kind of a side thing. And then keep highlighting what people are doing well. Um, and if someone is, is doing great and they're ready for it, encourage them to do a video on the team page to teach what they are doing well, right? That help raise up your leaders and get them involved. Just some thoughts on there. All right. No one else is piping up. I will move to um, Chris. I know you mentioned talking about this and anybody else who wants to pipe up. Was there ever a defining moment when your why changed and you found new fuel for doing the business. When did that happen and how did it change things? Um, yes, there was a time, well, I'll tell you, and I, I can't remember which rank it was. Honestly, I think it was gold. And I have to say to you guys, I remember, and I don't remember what, what this applied to, but I remember what how exciting it was to be silver. I remember how exciting it was to be gold and senior gold. And because I know, sometimes I know that it's sometimes I feel guilty trying to talk to my team that haven't hit the levels that I'm at. And I think, you know, like, Oh, I want the, but I want them to believe me because I really remember how exciting it was to get to each one of those levels. Because remember, I didn't believe that this was really something that could happen. So when I got to those levels, I was like, Oh my word, this is amazing. And I just, another, and we needed the money and it was a gift. And then I'm like, I don't have to leave my home for this. I can put my kids to bed and then I can go talk to people about staying healthy and their products and cheering them on. And it was just a lot of fun. And, but I remember at gold, I think somewhere between gold and senior gold. And I, you guys, I also worked four days a week, four full days of the week. I was in a gym all day long with little kids and there was hardly time to run to the bathroom and I was switching buildings every day. And, um, you all know my story for the most part, I think, but I just, between those two ranks, I remember thinking, I don't know if I can keep doing this because they were late nights and they were, and I was tired and I was working hard. And then instantly it was like a moment. And instantly I was like, but what would happen to my people? What, what would happen to my people? What happened to my team? Because I had these cheers that were doing this with me and, you know, Sarah and Janelle and, you know, there was and Kay and there was other people that were joining in too. And, and I was like, what would I do? I can't just quit. I do remember thinking it was hard. And I remember thinking, I can't quit all the, what, what's going to happen to all these people. They just all started on their products. And I, I've been doing this a little bit longer. And I started to come back with all these excuses of the excuses that I had to quit flipped into excuses of, I can't quit. I have to keep going and I want to keep going. So I know that was defining because it, it was really, it came down to the people. And then, like I said, too, I, when I hit, when I hit senior Ruby, it was in between senior Ruby and hit that 1000 points. And I saw that my 18 year teaching career paycheck was the same as what I was doing with Plexus. I was like, all right, Lord, I believe you. I'm, we are all in and go. And I was already all in. I should just say, I mean, it sounds like I wasn't cause I was obviously, cause you kind of have to be when you get to that point. But I was like, this is game on we're going. And, um, and there were, you guys, there was bumpy roads in there too. I mean, I, it wasn't always puppies and kitties and rainbows and unicorns. I mean, there was tough stuff too. People quit, people leave, you know, like people come and they go, but you're, it, there's, so those were some of the big defining moments. And then yes, hitting Emerald was huge. Quitting my job was huge. Seeing my team succeed was huge. Just watching them rank up was amazing and seeing them do things, you know, and Sarah coming to Hawaii with me, you know, that time and watching other people join in and other team, you know, team members hitting goals and breaking, breaking through tough things, you know, like 
it, it's all were defining moments where I was like, this is what you want me to do. And I'm going to keep going. So I don't know. It's, it's a multitude of stuff, but you got to look for them, you know, and, and you've got to continue to be grateful and you've got to look for that stuff and keep dreaming big and look for the, look for the positive things. And those are the things that are going to propel you forward and keep you going. Ah, y'all so good. <laughs> okay. Last question, any jewel, any guys uh, pop up on this? I think this is great to end on um, going from what Chris said, but um, sacrifices, the hard times, like Chris was just saying, anyone that wants to add on to, you know, the sacrifices and things that were hard, but was it really worth it? 100%. 100%, without a doubt, yes. I was thinking about this question so much today because I, I was just sitting there thinking about the past six years and like the return, the return, when I think about the return on my investment, you know, watching or watching a TV show or what I got out of watching a TV show versus the return I got pouring into other people, working on myself, working on my team, helping my team. There's no comparison in that. The return on investment, it's not a sacrifice for me. It, it, it's a, it's a, an investment. And I think you have to think about that. Like the sacrifices you're making, are they really sacrifices or are they investments? Um, Chris touched on a little bit you know, our kids, I know sometimes us mamas feel like, you know, this, this, this takes, this takes a lot of time and I'm not going to lie. It does, but our kids know that we love them. They are not neglected. They have loving fathers who put them to bed or when they, you know, or whatever. And it's not a sacrifice. It's an investment for their future and for our future and for our dreams and teaching them that, you know, you know how many times you guys, if I didn't have this business, I would not know about positive affirmations or to teach my kids to read John Maxwell books, or that is an investment. That's no sacrifice. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have that if I didn't, if I didn't take time to do that for myself. And I know that's where God has me, you know, for a reason, but it's like, yeah, the return on the investment is no comparison TV show. I like TV shows. I mean, unlike Chris, we do have TVs. Well, they have TVs too, but we do have, you know, Netflix and stuff like that. And we do watch our shows, but not until my work is done. And sometimes I'm doing my little work while I'm watching my Netflix with my husband, but that's our chill time. That's our time together. And, you know, you can do that. You just have to, you just have to, you know, organize your time. But, um, so you can do that together if that's what you love to do, but it's not a a sacrifice. Okay. Um, it's such an investment on your future, your kids, your personal growth, others. Um, yeah, that's where my mind went right away. Um, for me, it is absolutely 100% worth it just for the fact of who I have become through this process. Um, I am not the same person that I was two and a half years ago when I started this. I don't even recognize the person I was two and a half years ago when I started this. People who haven't seen me in that amount of time wouldn't recognize me because I'm entirely different human. (laughs) Like I've grown through so many different things. I've faced challenges I never would have faced and overcome them. I have learned to communicate better. Relationships are better. Um, Just the growth alone is worth it. If I never made a dime from any of this, it would have been all worth it, 100%. And the thing is, God's gonna have you on a journey, no matter what you do in life, whether it's plexus or some other thing, he's going to use the circumstances around you to refine you and to help you grow and to help um, sanctify you. (laughs) If you guys want to go to Plexus Church tonight, he's going to use the circumstances around you to shape you and mold you. And if you allow Plexus in this community to help you do that, 
that's what is worth it is the refining that happens through the process of becoming who you need to become in this. So that to me is worth it. Thanks lady. The, pe oh, the people, the people are worth it. You know how many times in the last, how many years I've said, I would never know so many of you, if it wasn't for this company and this opportunity, I mean, and, and that's where that change, you know, like the growth that we've learned from how much we learn from each other, how this team pours in you guys, I've worked so many of us have worked with people our whole lives. I've had, so I've grown so much through these relationships and what I've learned, um, you know, like from other people's experiences and from just advice, wisdom, you know, our own growth journeys that we've been on book clubs, <laughs> books that we've, we've read together and worked through and talked through and had tears through and team calls. And I just think about so, and you know, I've been reunited with friends who I knew when I was much younger, you know, and that I don't know if we would have connected on this kind of level this way. And just the people that, and that's how God uses us. He uses people, right? He uses his people to help grow us and change us too, you know? And yeah, I just, I cannot imagine my life without any of you truly, you know, cause we've, I've crossed very, very short paths with some of you, but now I get to work every day with many of those people. It's just amazing. You know, I just can't, can't say that enough. And yeah, you know, so it's all, I love my people. <laughs> um, and I'm so grateful for you guys and for that part of this too. I feel like I could be on the verge of crying right now. I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, if, I just want to make sure no one else, you guys good. Okay. So my last thoughts on this, um, I wasn't going to pop in, but I just have to now. So it is easy to stay comfortable. That's a sacrifice to get out of your comfort zone, right? We can choose to stay comfortable, to not do something that's hard work, to do what's comfortable and what we're used to, or we can step into something that's going to help us grow and something that is going to make an impact. And that is where it becomes like so powerful. Like that's where God uses us, right? It's not where we stay in our bubble and we're comfortable and we take the easy road or whatever. And it's not to say you aren't doing other things in other areas of your life, but if that is something, if that is a reason that could hold you back, then that is absolutely not some that, I mean, you, that's a choice, right? So I just like hearing you guys talk. I mean, that, that was the big thing for me. Like I could, I could stay in my what's comfortable. It was very hard to do something that was scary. It, it's hard. It's hard to do something that you're not familiar with and you don't feel good at, or you don't feel like you're a leader and you have all the insecurities or whatever it is. But I look back similarly to what you said, M about six years ago, do not recognize the person I was hands down. I completely agree. I think all of us could probably say that, but in big ways, big, big ways. And knowing the ripple effect that that's made now, like I wouldn't be able to, I, I, mean, I wouldn't be the person I was now for, I mean, and even just the example I am to my kids. Um, but the ripple effect, everyone on this call, everyone on this team, and each of you have a ripple effect that you are doing through this. It is just it is incredible. It is worth it hands down for everyone else, if not yourself. So I love you guys. <laughs> if anyone else wants to pipe up, you can say something. Otherwise I'm going to, and just interrupt me. That's totally fine. Otherwise I'm going to close in giving you guys a challenge to reflect. I hope you're taking notes again and reflect give your takeaways to your sponsor, your upline, send a message tonight, send one in the morning, whichever one you want to do, but, um, do that. Send a message, say what you're going to take action on from this call. What's your big takeaways from this call? 
um, everyone, it might be something a little bit different, but we want to hear from you. And um, yeah, thanks for being on tonight and making this an extra long call. We love you guys. We wanted to be able to answer most as many questions as we could. And this was a lot of fun. So see ya.